Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this is tips number 218 entitled How to Use Plastic Gauge. Now, uh, what is plastic gauge? Well, this is plastic gauge, and it's a, a method, uh, a product used to measure bearing clearances in engines, but it has other applications that may be used in a machine shop if you can devise some, but it's, I'm going to show you how to use it, and we used to do this in the small engine class. And mainly this is something that's used in automotive work, and it allows you to uh, check that, that clearance without expensive tools like micrometers and, and uh, telescoping gauges and, and other gauges that might be used, and it's really quite accurate. Now the word plastic gauge is a all one word, and that is a trade name, and it comes in different flavors. Plastic gauge, which is nothing more than a tiny little uh, wax or plastic uh, wire, like a thread, and uh, it comes in uh, different gauges. It's been around since about 1948 or 1950. It's not new at all, but uh, there are three different colors that you can buy, and this can be purchased at just about any automotive store or on eBay or any place like that if you would ever need any, but the green is used for clearances between one and three thousandths. The red, which I'm going to use, is for uh, clearances between two and six thousandths, and the blue, and I don't have any of those other colors, is good for anywhere between four and nine thousandths. And when you get into those real big bearings uh, on uh, big engines and so on, you probably would need uh, either the, the red or the blue. This particular brand I've had for a long time, it's called, uh, made by Perfect Circle, but you're going to see all different names on that, but it's basically all the same thing, and I think they all use that uh, the same color code, but when you open this, and you really don't need to open it, we normally just tear the end off, that's what I did at school, I would tear off one inch uh, for each uh, student, because it had uh, the template on there, and then inside is the actual plastic gauge itself, and that's all there is to it, and a 10 inch piece of that's two or three dollars so you're you're paying for the system I suppose and the manufacturer and the distribution and all of that because there's really not much there but uh, the neat thing is here this will work either for uh, uh, thousandths of an inch or metric you see you can use one side of this or the other but these little uh, red marks here which I'm going to use in a minute are is what is going to be used to uh, measure. Can you see? I don't really have it upside down. Yeah, I got it upside down. Anywhere between two, three, four, and, and six thousandths. Now what we're doing with this plastic gauge is we're going to install it in the bearing of an engine and then we're just uh, tightening the rod cap and uh, squeezing it and it's like an elephant stepping on an ant. It's going to squish it and make it flat and then we measure how flat it is with this little gauge. So let's get started. I hope that was an introduction that uh, allowed you to understand what I'm going to do here. Most of you will recognize this little Briggs & Stratton engine that I cut away and I show in uh, this video what makes it work number two on how a four cycle engine works. So check that out if you haven't already seen it. But I'm going to uh, just take the head off, which will unscrew here real quick, turn it upside down and remove the bottom uh, crankcase here and uh, we'll work on it from the bottom side without taking the whole thing apart. You can see the evolution of these Briggs engines, and this one is probably from the late 40s or early 50s where they started to uh, modernize here, and, and we have an aluminum uh, bottom, or I guess you could call this the crankcase. Actually, this is the crankcase, but the pan. I guess we'll call that the oil pan, but that's aluminum, die cast, and I got the zinc flywheel, but we're still a long way from a, a fully... Uh, aluminum made engine and so this is very heavy although this is probably a one horse engine or less and it's nice to have a, a Briggs book too because that'll have your torque specs as well as your bearing clearance specs and all of that and, and if you want to know anything about Briggs be, be, get one of these uh, they used to donate these to the school by the case you know Briggs was real good companies don't do that much anymore but we used to get a lot of good stuff from the various companies if you would just order it and ask for it on school letterhead so the first thing I'm going to do here is to take off the uh, two rod cap bolts here 
which uh, and that'll take the oil dipper off too or I guess they're kind of loose now inspecting this engine just visually here and with my fingers there's just an awful lot of slop here way more than there should be so I know that uh, that the uh, that this is worn and that I probably will use need one of the plastic gauges that for, for uh, greater uh, clearance here remember that if the students or, or if you got uh, 20 people together and and uh, they were to measure you'd get uh, well probably not 20 different measurements but you'd get several different measurements because of the feel of a micrometer uh, is re relatively subjective, especially for inexperienced users. I know I gave you too much related information, too much information uh, anyway, but be sure and loosen uh, tighten bolts with a, uh, with a breaker bar, not your ratchet, not your torque, definitely not your torque wrench, not made to loosen. Okay, um, also I so much prefer six point sockets and the smaller sizes over the over the 12 point I don't know if you do too I, I know that there's advantages to a 12 point but you know these don't slip around off the corners of the bolts especially on the smaller sizes these will be a fine thread cap screw probably a grade five or eight I'm not sure till I take this off that's the oiling system not sure these bolts are so old maybe they didn't even standardize the marking system at that time fortunately this engine isn't dirty because I cleaned it up at the time I made the cutaway so it's not so messy to work on it's a pleasure actually yeah those are fine thread and then that cap should come right off and it does and it's in good shape and I have no idea how many miles this engine has on it so I'm going to wipe the other part I'm going to wipe the uh, the journal here of the crankshaft and then we're going to use the uh, plastic gauge. Next I'm going to uh, actually apply the uh, plastic gauge to the, the uh, crankshaft journal here and I'm using just a dab of grease to hold it in place so it doesn't fall into the bowels of the engine. You know a lot of times you're doing this and the engine is totally disassembled and that makes it easier. You need to cut a piece of this uh, plastic gauge just about the right width here See, that'll, that'll hold it on there. And notice the position that I am here. Uh, that is, I'm in this position, you know, not off to the side. And we also could have applied, I think, the plastic gauge onto here. It might have been easier. Then I'm going to put the rod cap back on. the bolts in place now do not turn the crank during this time because we do not want to smear the plastic gauge so I'll run those down and then I'm going to torque them and the torps, torque spec is about 90 or 100 inch pounds and if you're going to use the metric system it's 11.3 newton meters now I'll torque it with my snap-on torque wrench I'll torque each of them to about 50 to start with and then to I'm going to go 90 two-hand job now and you can use any kind of torque wrench you got the click type is nice because you don't have to look at it and I do have one of those but not in the inch pound it's in the in the foot pound but I like them better than the beam type and now it's time to do the actual measuring and this can all be done in just a matter of minutes really if you're not talking about it 
So there's this flattened out blue plastic gauge and remember that that little thread looked like this to start with so I flattened it out that much and then take the gauge here and remember that it's thousands on one side and it's a metric on the other side for the metric gear heads and this side for the English gear heads and we're just going to compare both the white and the blue are uh, are usable here so we're, we're just going to try to match it up and eyeball it there and it looks like uh, it's uh, between eight and nine so I'm just going to say uh, it looks like it's about I'm going to call it nine and uh, in a minute we're going to compare that by actually measuring it and see how accurate this is remember that uh, the plastic age is oil soluble so does that mean you can leave it on there I suppose it does but I like to uh, remove it with my fingernail and scrape it off but uh, also let me make a point that and we could have fastened it right here on the rod cap but put it uh, right here on the rod cap not off to the side so that it's pressing down because that's probably where most of the wear is I would think remember this can be done on big engines and probably other applications in the machine shop and that's why I'm showing this in the first place so let me uh, clean this off and take some actual measurements using precision micrometers I will now measure the crank journal with a micrometer and then I'm going to measure the, uh, the rod here with the telescoping gauge and you notice I put the, the cap on already but right here I'm going, going to measure and I'm getting I'm going to call it 741 this should have been 750 I looked it up originally so there's about nine thousand wear on that remember this is probably a, a worn out engine so now let's measure the rod now I do not have a micrometer small enough to go in there so I'm checking it with a telescoping gauge and the same micrometer and I have uh, 749 so there's really very little wear in here if this is the original one I'm surprised that the wear is on the cast iron instead of the aluminum so doing the subtraction here you can see that we have uh, eight thousandths gap and remember we do need uh, two or three thousandths I don't remember the original specs on that but the very purpose of some gap is uh, for the oil film if it were if there was no gap this would be clamped and we don't want it clamped we want it to turn freely and we want there to be oil in there at all times and there is a little oil hole here that uh, maybe you saw it earlier so that the oil gets in there but it isn't a pressurized system so we have eight thousandths uh, of uh, of clearance which is too much so all the specs would call that for being uh, to be rebuilt or this to be replaced but we're not going to do that this is just an informational video so I hope you like that I'm not quite done yet I'm inserting this little piece of footage here uh, into the uh, video but uh, I went down to Napa and I bought uh, the green and the blue I already had the red now notice the difference in the size of the thread here from the red to the blue but the original that I had was a perfect circle and by the way I misspelled plastic gauge that is how it is spelled and that's their trade name and Napa sells sealed power now and I had to go down there and get the blue when I realized I had too much gap to use the red so that's that's why I, I did that and I bought the green while I was at it but I don't really need it so uh, just for your information remember that it's English on one side and metric on the other and it cost two dollars and twenty nine cents for one strip of that and they also had the yellow down there they had quite a good selection so check your Napa store if you would want some of this I like to measure things so in an attempt to verify the accuracy of the blue plastic gauge what I've done here is I've got two parallels and I've got a piece of the blue plastic gauge 
already uh, between the two parallels and I've got here uh, two six thousandths feelers gauges that are really separating the uh, parallels. You understand what I'm doing? And I tighten the vise about the same tightness that I would normally tighten it for uh, any uh, machining operation. Now let's take it out and see what the measurement is. Pretty well flattened out. Did I mention that uh, using grease helps hold it in place? Probably did, I don't know. I'm doing this video over two days, so sometimes I forget uh, what I uh, have told you. So looking on the, wow, looking on the English side here, I'm actually showing a little bit maybe over 5,000 but it's pretty much right on five, five and a, or six, I should say six, five and a half or six thousandths. So I think that's a pretty good test of the accuracy of the plastic gauge. So go ahead and use this in the machine shop if you can think of any application uh, go ahead and put it in the comments because it's something I really don't use in the shop but I have used it repeatedly uh, uh, you know in the uh, small engine classes and so on when I used to teach that and just uh, wanted to make this uh, video available to people who've never heard of it and I hope you enjoyed this and this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and be sure and watch my 650 other videos